making mistakes with AI. Well, I think this is a great example for us to take on today. Looking for opportunities to play and learn. I've got the installation on my local PC done for GPT for all. It's up to version 2.43 and I've updated all of the components. Right now it's running GPT for all J version 1.3 groovy and we're just going to kick the tires on this a little bit today. We'll try some chats, try to get a good feel for the kinds of things that it can do. We'll get a good understanding of the limitations that this has. This is running on my local system. I have an, I have an onboard GPU. It's a 3060 Ti and we're going to try and see what we can do today. All right, so we're going to start a new chat and we're going to come down here and we're going to ask it some questions. It is being improved. Let's see what happens. So it's going to take some time to come back with an answer and you can see it is in fact generating a lucid response and it's telling us that there's language recognition, speech recognition, natural language processing, computer vision, deep learning. Those are all accurate and this seems to be a fairly coherent response. So yeah, that gets a thumbs up from me. If I am interested in learning about generative AI and you tell me more about how it works. Okay, so it's telling me about GANs, General Adversarial Networks. not the answer I was looking for. So now we're going to ask it a question that's going to be relevant to where we are today. These numbers are constantly changing. So it is a neural network using amounts, large amounts of data contains billions of parameters. This model that we are using is a B billion level of parameters. All right, that's a pretty coherent response. All right, let's make a new chat. Let's change gears a little bit here. And we're going to do some coding. How about some HTML coding. I would like to make a simple web page, a large text area for making comments, comments to less than 500 characters. So it looks like we're going to do Flask, which I am not familiar with Flask. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Could probably do a better job with the question here. Let's try that again. Okay, so it's going straight into writing HTML. It's only doing the form. It's got a name label and a text input box. It's got a comments label and a text area comments box. It's got a submit button. It has completely ignored my request for a script that will count the characters. Okay. Let's Try writing some content. 
as a technology blogger. Okay, so, so far it's actually done a pretty good job. It's given me a section for introduction. We've got a paragraph one about understanding the basics with some points to include in the paragraph. Paragraph two, which is about setting goals and priorities. Paragraph three, building a strong team. Paragraph four, developing a solid plan. So far, this is pretty coherent discussion. And I'd like to emphasize that all of this is running locally on my computer. And here it is with the conclusion. So it did not give me the structure that I asked for. I asked it for top five things. We got four paragraphs, an introduction, and a conclusion. So it did not follow through with all of the things that I asked it for, but it did put together some key points to consider. And the really critical thing that is important to observe here is that this is a language model that is running on my own computer. It is not leaving my computer at all. It is completely running this locally. Certainly enough for you to begin the work and solve you know the problem that somebody like me I have what you would call white page syndrome and this definitely fixes that so I think there's some real utility and value to a model like this and what we're gonna see as we're looking ahead what's gonna happen in the very near term is these models are very rapidly accelerating in development there are lots of folks that are out there in the community that are working on this, that are striving to make this available as a an everyday run by the user, not an enterprise or a, a corporation that will allow you to run and work with this content in smaller and smaller form factors. So today, this is what's possible on a single system with a, a pretty beefy GPU capability but we're, we're looking for this capability to continue to be made available on smaller and smaller devices. So I think it's not unrealistic that we will see, certainly by the end of this year, models that are able to run on a device like a smartphone and will include a great deal of capability and will be able to do quite a lot of work without that information ever leaving the individual device and that's when the utility really kicks in you know where I'm really excited is when you can take a, a small device a microelectronic device with a microphone and a speaker and a screen a couple of buttons and do something really valuable that I, that's super exciting to me and I'm very much looking forward to what's possible with that space we're gonna keep tabs on GPT for all because it is this pathway of what seems to be working but has some mistakes it's not completely cohesive it's not adherent to what I've asked uh, it's not always going to give a right answer but it is going to continue to get better and that's what we want to pay attention to what are the places where the mistakes are made today but you could see with a reasonable amount of progress that this capability is going to grow and that someday in the not too distant future we're going to have access to this on a one-to-one -one basis without needing a connection to the cloud. So with that, this has been AI Mistakes. If you like the content here, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel and definitely want to hear from you, if there are thoughts you have, questions, things you'd like to explore, I hope you're having a great day. Go make some mistakes. See you next time.